um, for the first seminars of uh, this festival, uh, Brandon LaBelle spoke about listening and about acoustics as a framework for understanding uh, and reading uh, reality. So I was thinking that when we use um, listening as a, as a framework to speak about, for example, activism, we can think about listening in terms of forming communities, in terms of um, organizing politically, in terms of uh, listening and finding consonance and dissonance between uh, different ideas. Um, on the other hand, uh, listening and acoustics could be a completely different uh, uh, framework. For example, uh, he also spoke about um, um, bioacoustics in relation to biopolitics. So, for example, today we can listen to various uh, processes of our bodies uh, through data, so through sensors with various apps and uh, tools for measurement, we can listen to the processes of our bodies. Um, a different, yet another possibility is when we are thinking about the more either subjective or med meditative uh, forms of um, listening, not in terms of uh, subjectivity or, or measurements of bodily processes, but in terms of um, the holistic aspects of listening as um, our bodies in relation to the environment, to the multiple forms of life and the way that we occupy the space uh, in terms of our relationship and uh, resonance with other uh, life forms and the environment. And I'd like to discuss a little bit um, the relationship that being a practitioner might have with also um, arts education and pedagogy. Uh, the, the two main approaches are arts education, where you teach skills, techniques, uh, tools, uh, how to develop a relationship with those, um, ma ma the materiality and the, the physicality and the, the, the tasks that you have to conduct to become a practitioner. And you, the other approach is called uh, learning through the art, where you use the same tools, skills, techniques and practices to actually convey um, concepts or skills that are actually transferable to other disciplines. So for example, you use um, art uh, history or art forms or art uh, artistic techniques to learn about um, history, about maths, about science, about in the sonic arts, for example, uh, we learn about uh, electronics, about acoustics, about uh, the environment, about so many things that we learn through, that we convey with our sonic uh, works, that I think there is a big parallel with this pedagogical aspects of um, art as a form of learning and uh, conveying ideas that are not specifically present only in the materiality of the, um, the medium that you have in your art form. And I'm speaking about this because I think when we uh, speak of the topic of this particular seminar, which is diversity um, and equality. I think a lot of our activism through Sonic Arts uh, uses this approach, which is to convey our uh, political ideas, our protest uh, concepts, discussions that we want to have in relation to, for example, uh, gender, identity, racism, 
um, uh, uncovering uh, colonial uh, histories and narratives or decolonialism, migration, and all the topics that we actually want to talk about through our artistic practice. One topic that's quite difficult to convey through sonic arts and to discuss as a practitioner in our community um, is the topic of uh, work and the topic of class and the topic and the fact that our profession is such um, a fragile and a precarious uh, form of work uh, within um, the, the cultural industries and um, how not only our form of work is artistic work is such uh, an unsafe um, occupation and profession to, to choose or to actually uh, rely on when you uh, are not a middle class and upper class, when your uh, citizenship status might be at risk or might be precarious or you might not have all the privileges that certain um, social, uh, financial uh, and legal uh, status provide both for artists and workers that in general are considered um, within the spectrum of diversity, uh, our uh, presence in the arts, sometimes uh, organizations and um, yeah, organizations and institutions, they capitalize a lot on our presence as a form of uh, getting grants or funding or prestige for their organizations as organizations that are radical, that are decolonial, that are uh, diverse, that are open, but the reality is that we are an army of freelancers, self-employed, unemployed, um, competing for half an hour, one hour slots within organizations and institutions that are organized, fully fledged as uh, a company and an organization with traditional uh, departments. Really the migrants, the diverse demographics which are present usually in the lower bottom of these institutions like uh, working in as security, as front of house, staff, as cleaners, as restaurant and cafe uh, staff, that demographics is the first to have their jobs put at risk, the first to be made redundant, the first to be affected by the crisis that are making in the UK, uh, in England, over 3,000 employees uh, in museums already have been made redundant. So we see that that layer, our layer, is the one that despite being the most diverse, which grants points and uh, funds and prestige to organizations on the reality is actually the first one that suffers uh, the consequences of the multiple cuts. My provocation to you is how can we convey these discussions through uh, our sonic arts practice, through, since we have the acoustics and listening as our framework for understanding re reality and practicing, but how can we discuss these topics which are so um, difficult to aestheticize which is a different, um, a different reality from, from gender or identity that uh, can be so potent aesthetically um, and artistically. So yeah, that's all I can say for now.